Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Duty role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. We have another great one-shot for you, Transatlantic Terror. It was written by John Hook, and he will be our game master. This is the first time that we've run this. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. John. Welcome, everyone. My elite class of dilettantes, uh, representing the finest of American families, I might say. You are all passengers aboard the RMS Adriatic, one of the finest ships in the White Star Fleet. We begin the adventure on day two of a nine-day journey whose uh, ultimate destination is Liverpool, England, but um, that'll be on day nine. On day eight, you will arrive in Belfast, Ireland, uh, and there'll be a brief uh, uh, eight hour, eight hours uh, layover in Belfast before uh, continuing on to Liverpool. So as I said, this is day two. Uh, it is the summer of 1923. You launched out of New York on Saturday, June 16th. So today is going to be Sunday, the 17th. Um, clear skies, uh, very nice weather, um, warm, but there's a, there's a, there's a, a little bit of a cool breeze coming off the, uh, the ocean waters. Um, just to familiarize you guys with the, uh, amenities that are uh, available to you. Um, some of the activities you may partake in if you so desire at any time uh, include things like uh, squash. You can play squash. Uh, there's a shuffleboard area. There is a public lounge open for uh, all first class passengers. Um, there is a uh, unique to the White Star Line, a Turkish bath, which will also double as a, a swimming bath, or in modern terms, we would call that a swimming pool, and that is available for certain times of the day. Uh, the Turkish bath, uh, there is a fee to use that, but you can simply have that uh, charged to your room. Uh, there is a small gymnasium, and uh, what is really popular um, is there is skeet shooting available. Um, and so you can, uh, there are um, uh, shotguns that are available for rent. And there is, again, a small fee for the skeet shooting, but that can also be charged to your room. Um, the dining hall is, uh, it uh, serves three meals a day. It serves breakfast promptly at 8 a.m., it has a dinner service, as they call it, uh, beginning at 12.30 p.m. in the afternoon. And then tea service is at 5.30 p.m. sharp. In the evening, after the tea service has concluded, um, at 8.30 p.m., about half of the dining room tables are... Uh, stowed and put away so that the dining room turns into an evening um, uh, dance club. So uh, when the tables are put away, uh, that portion of the floor is a dance floor. And then there's uh, the other half of the room has tables uh, to accommodate uh, couples to uh, enjoy themselves that evening in the dance hall. Um, so, uh, those are the variety of, um, ways that you can entertain yourself as well as, um, you know, there's just deck chairs. People do spend time, uh, reading, socializing, um, you know, napping, whatever you want. You know, I mean, there's, um, lots to do and, uh, and lots of time to, uh, to do it with as you are uh, crossing the, uh, 
the Atlantic. So, um, you guys do know each other. Uh, some of you may know each other uh, a little more uh, uh, intimately, you know, personally, um, while others uh, you just simply may know in, in general uh, passing because as a group, as uh, part of the elite uh, living in New York, in the New England area, you know, the Hamptons, that kind of thing. Uh, you guys have, uh, and, and y'all are all of a similar uh, age range. Uh, so you're all kind of in the same generation. Uh, you have uh, for years through private schooling and official functions and whatnot, uh, you guys have been kind of uh, traveling and running into each other throughout the years in similar uh, social circles. Uh, so you guys can uh, have as much or as little familiarity uh, with each other as you uh, choose to, to, to share with us. Um, so as I said, we will uh, begin the scenario on day two. And it is uh, 5 p.m. So, Augie. Catherine, Catherine, darling, I didn't know you were on board the ship. Gusty. Gusty, it's been too long. Oh, that's very nice. Nice to see you. I oh, think great. that um, uh, George and uh, Richard are both here as well. Oh, up to no good, I'm sure. Oh, Catherine. Gusty, Richard. Uh, speak of the devil, George. Oh, George, it's not... been too long. How have you been? Oh, just got back from a wonderful safari. You should see that bloody old lion up on the wall. It looks quite grand. No, oh, I'm sure it does. If it's bloody, you should talk to your taxidermist. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, will you be joining us tonight uh, for cards? Oh, that sounds delightful. Yes. Uh, promptly after tea, or we have uh, uh, time uh, after tea for uh, another round of skeet. Oh, that sounds very good. Have you tried? Have you tried their Turkish bath? Not yet. It sounds like fun. Oh, it's it's a grand time. The massage and no, but surely they don't have the women and the men commingling. No, no, no. They, they do. They, they, they do. Hmm. It's European, like of course. Yeah, very European. Oh uh, yeah, it's like the baths in uh, Budapest. Most enlightened, I think. I like to think so. Well, we're rich. We can do whatever we want, can't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, then we'll be intermingling perhaps of the genders, but not of the classes. Oh, I don't think the third class even have access to this part of the ship. I hope they don't. It'll all oh, be in Bellman. mortal danger. Bellman. Uh, yes, sir. A, yes, uh, sir. Yes, a, uh, like a uh, bourbon on the rocks, please, out here on deck. Right away, sir. Thank you. And he, he looks to see if anybody else has a oh, uh, drink I'll have order. A, uh, an aviation, please. Oh, yes, ma'am. That sounds delicious. I'll yes, sir. For and, tea. And Thank you. Ah, very good, sir. Very good. Uh, would you like these drinks delivered to uh, to the dining hall for tea during the tea service, or would you like them here on the deck? Well, we've still got, what, an hour and a half before? Uh, yes, here on the deck. 30 minutes. Half an oh, hour. 30 yeah. minutes. Enjoy the beautiful view. Yes, please bring them here to us. Right away. Right away. And he bustles off. Oh. The ocean certainly is blue. Oh, I'm glad uh, I'm glad the Vanderbilts have, uh, could afford such a grand education for you, Gusty. <laughs> such a... Oh, for a moment I thought that I was going to have to correct you and explain it. We don't own all of this blue, just little bits and pieces of it. Not yet, at least. 
When you figure out how to lay rail across the Atlantic, it'll be another matter. What and then a, a booming voice says, that'll be the day. And as you look over, you can see um, that... Uh, uh, oh, my goodness, where is he? Uh, a, a, a large, um, portly fellow uh, comes walking up, and uh, you guys all instantly recognize uh, Joseph Taft. Ah, oh, Mr. Taft. Um, <laughs> I was actually thinking more of tunnels underneath the ocean. <laughs> oh, you have been reading too much of, uh, of Mr. Wells, I believe. I love Mr. Wells. But I mean, Gusty, if you can figure out how to go across the ocean, then you wouldn't lose the view. I can't imagine the view in a tunnel is any good. Well, that's Sorry. true, except that if you go across the top, then ships are going to bump into your... I'd have to make suspension bridges all the way across. Oh, but it'd be well worth it. I don't know, aren't you a little afraid when you're riding on a bridge? It's very high up. Oh, me? No. No? <laughs> no, I... makes I, me I... nervous. I think I should miss the gentle to and fro of rocking on an ocean liner. Mm. So Taft, what are you doing on, on board the ship? You're heading for Belfast. Uh, so just you know, just trying to get some uh, some summer summer air, just the vacation. Are you here with anyone? No, no, just uh, enjoying life and going to uh, drink it all in. <laughs> the best way. Well, we just ordered drinks. Bed you weren't here a moment ago. Yourself. Ah, right. I'm if you you will excuse me, I'm and he kind of you know pulls on his, his shirt a little and he says, I'm going to be dressing, you know, for for I'm going to go and prepare dress for dinner, don't you know? And uh, dinner with the captain. <laughs> See you later. Toodaloo. See you, Taft. Not sure if Taft is oh, trying yeah. to impress us or not, but. Dinner with the help. Hmm. Oh, but generally, you uh, <laughs> one doesn't uh, mention name drop, name drop things like that with a uh, for a casual purpose. I've learned. Yes, I mean, I think the captain's a gentleman. He's an accomplished individual. I'm sure he but, is, um, of course. I don't know what his experience is or how long he's been uh, captain. Well, oh, maybe right. get yourself invited to dinner and you can ask. <laughs> but of course, you're not as impressive as a Joseph. Uh, you don't have that privilege. You just have to sit here on the deck and speculate like the rest of us. Taft, wasn't one of his relatives president? Or has that not <laughs> happened yet? It has happened. Uh, yes, his uncle uh, not only was formerly president, but is now currently um, I believe, uh, Attorney General. Hmm. Oh, oh, nice. So. Also a substantial fellow. Yes. We'll just wait for the day when you'll see a Kennedy in the White House. <laughs> a Catholic? Don't be absurd. And an O'Leary, no doubt, as uh, Vice President. <laughs> I mean, oh, just, I just think... Just wait I and see, boys. Just wait and see. I personally think it would be just fine. I... You wouldn't care if you were Jewish or anything else, but uh, I don't know. The people in this country don't seem to like Catholics very much. Well, you know, I mean, since the Catholics are the only ones not who's not going to be burning in hell after this is all over, uh, I can see the animosity. Hmm. From the stories I've heard, you didn't seem like a very religious woman, Catherine. I never said I was. Ah, so we <laughs> let's uh, yes, let's move the clock forward, and it is now five thirty. You have all uh, changed and are uh, dressed for dinner, uh, and you are now uh, arriving at the uh, the dining room, the dining hall, and uh, coincidentally at approximately the same time. So the four of you are now kind of reconvening in the hallway as you're approaching the dining hall. Catherine, Richard, Gusty. George, that uh, top hat's very spiffing. 
Is it new? Very. Why Lion not? skin, perhaps? Uh, not yet. I'm working on it, though. My tailor's doing wonders with the rest of the carcass. Mm. Uh, so as you guys approach the dining room, uh, uh, you know, the doorway to the dining room, um, you can see that uh, Sorry. Catherine, let's see if we can get a table near Taft and the captain. I want to hear Taft's uh, efforts at impressing him. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea, Richard. So as you, as you, um, as you get to the door, um, the steward greeting you at the dining room door uh, cause, uh, 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 the, the, the way that it works is you're greeted by a steward, steward, uh, leads you to a table and that kind of thing. All right. So, uh, so as you, uh, come to the steward, um, the, uh, the steward, um, has a, uh, a big, uh, thick black beard and uh, and kind of long curly uh, black hair and, and uh, very heavy set eyebrows um, and and very tall and uh, so he kind of he he looks down at you and and just kind of silently looks at you and and kind of this way you know kind of kind of a look. Yeah, well, sit over here. I think we want to sit by that table. Uh, okay, so you you request a table, uh, and so he he looks around and and he just he just walks you up to the captain's table and starts pulling out chairs at the captain's table. Oh, excellent! Thank you. Um, front row seats, excellent. Thank oh you. my, quite good fellow. <laughs> Do we know the name of the captain? Uh, yes, Captain Barkley. Be careful not to call him Captain Barkley. <laughs> yeah, Robert Barkley. Uh, yeah, so the uh, steward uh, uh, pulls uh, chairs out and, uh, and you guys uh, are now seated not just near, but actually at the captain's table. Oh, Richard, I think we'll be able to hear just fine uh, from this seat, these seats. Yes, I, I like the front row seat. I was hoping that my sniggering wouldn't be overheard, though, when he makes an ass of himself. I should have well, to be, I can it be helped. You'd have to be across the room for people not to hear your snicker, Richard. <laughs> just we'll have to be polite and bear in mind that He's related to a politician. But, uh, oh, what's wrong with politicians? Politicians. <clears throat> Don't get me started on what's wrong with politicians. Uh, and so the room is starting to fill in more and more as more people are kind of coming in. Um, you know, the stewards are all bustling about, uh, you know, uh, serving drinks and uh, getting people seated uh, and a steward um, uh, escorts uh, Mr. Taft and a older woman uh, to the table and Taft as he's approaching he's like oh, what, what is the meaning of this I don't recall you being invited oh, our invitation just came a little late that's all Oh, this is preposterous. There aren't oh. even enough chairs. And uh, the steward says, oh, uh, sorry, let me uh, take care of that for you. And this young man, um, 
you know, very clean shaven and slicked back hair. Um, you know, he, he says, uh, just a moment, sir. I, let me take care of this for you. And uh, he, he's able to, to get one more chair and just kind of starts wedging it in so that now the, uh, the older lady uh, Taft, and then there's one left chair uh, remaining for uh, the captain for when he arrives and, uh, and Taft and the, and the woman uh, take their seats. Of course, I stand as the lady is seated and then uh, introduce myself. Madam, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. And she looks at you and she says, hmm, uh, the pleasure is mine. Uh, 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 I am, what, oh, what is my name? Oh, uh, Osterman, uh, Joanna Osterman. Osterman? That's a fine you. name. Richard Rockefeller, at your service. And she, she gives a, a polite uh, head bow to each of you. Good evening. Good evening. Does the name Osterman ring any bells? Um, go ahead and give me... where the money came from? Yeah, go Good ahead business. and give me a um, an idea roll. I got a 40. So we can name it with the business. I have no idea. That is a hard success. Yeah. So Osterman, um, you it does seem to ring a bell. Um, of course, the uh, the automobile industry is uh, is really starting to uh, pick up. Uh, in fact. It's um, one of the fastest growing industries at this time, and as well as um, technology for that industry. And uh, it seems to, you seem to recall uh, reading about an Osterman um, who has developed uh, or perfected um, transmission, automobile transmission uh, technology. It's quite possible that this uh, uh, dame is uh, yeah. part of that uh, family. And given that we're developing an interest in uh, the fuel oils for the growing industry, uh, that's of some interest. Uh, so uh, she seems to be uh, she you know uh, greets you and then uh, she seems to be uh, 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 you know fairly quiet she's just kind of sitting there with her hands folded together on the table as uh, as she just kind of you know looks around the room and you know is waiting for uh, for the meal to begin uh, Ta Taft on the other hand is just like <laughs> I just I Infuriates me that I. <sighs> it's okay, Taff. Sorry if I'm here to ruin your special day. Oh, it's not you, Catherine. It's <sighs> Vanderbilt. Oh, just. Perhaps if they get you a bigger chair. <laughs> I never. That would explain a few things. <laughs> and he, he starts, you know, waiter, waiter. He starts calling for, for a drink. While we're waiting for the captain, could uh, Stuart, you need one minute? Just one minute, thank you. <laughs> I say you're not supposed to leave the table when <laughs> George Taft is going to take your chair. <laughs> <laughs> Or his other buttock. <laughs> I totally missed that in the in the chat. Yeah, I was I know, even right. looking at the chat. Sorry. Thank you. No, it's, and Stuart's not going to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. I was oblivious. Pushy. Sorry about that. Not a problem. It's going to be a big 
pet accident if I did not deal with that right <laughs> next to me. So <laughs> that's just a it'll be another prop you can pull out real quick. Yeah. Uh, here's, here's the dog pee. These sausages taste nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so um, is, you guys are waiting for dinner, and uh, eventually the uh, captain arrives, uh, and uh, he gives a he gives a little you know speech welcoming everyone again to uh, uh, to the uh, Adriatic, and hopes everyone's enjoying their stay. And then you know there's a light round of applause, and then the uh, stewards seem to be swarming in from everywhere to start bringing plates and plates and plates of uh, food. Delicious. I believe they've got a, a, a better uh, a quartet than the last uh, trip I made across. Yes, the band is is amazing. And it is a four-piece band, yes. Well, Richard, when they heard you were coming, they practiced an extra four minutes every day. Practice makes perfect, Catherine, as you know. Captain Barclay, how long have you uh, been captain of this ship? Oh, well, um, um, uh, sir, I'm, I'm afraid I haven't had the pleasure to make your acquaintance. Oh, August Vanderbilt. You can call <sighs> me Gusty. Oh, very nice to meet you, Gusty. Um, yes, well, uh, I uh, have been um, uh, serving the uh, serving the seas for uh, thirty five years, but uh, I have been uh, captain of this fine vessel for the last three. Hmm. And uh, does she handle well? She's the top of the fleet, fastest of the fleet. That's what we heard. Fastest. Impressed with the. Uh... You you have the boats uh, on deck arranged so it does not interfere with the view. Very impressed with that. Well, I have nothing to do with the uh, the design of the ship, but it she is a marvel. She's uh, very well designed and and uh, perfectly uh, designed for uh, maximum luxury. Indeed, appreciate it. Uh, the weather so far has been uh, quite pleasing. Is it uh, meant to hold, or will we see any um, bother before we arrive? Uh, well, I, I I do believe if 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 the forecast is to be uh, uh, believed, it, we're just looking at fog once we pull into Belfast, but it should be clear skies uh, until then. Lovely. Should be beautiful. This is a fine time of year to sail. Indeed. The, your chef is fantastic. I don't think I've had a rack of lamb like this since... Uh, oof, I don't think I've ever had a rack of lamb this good. I will be sure to pass on the compliment. Thank you so very much. Uh, and so the evening is, you know, continuing on. It's It goes for, you know, about another half hour like this. And then not too far away... Um, there's a table and there's, uh, there's some, uh, light laughter and things that are happening at that table. And then, uh, um, as you guys are in the middle of your second course, um, your attention is drawn as you suddenly start hearing, uh, the chiming of, of, a of a wine glass being lightly struck by a knife. And as you look over at that table uh, with uh, some young people on it, a cat has invaded. Uh, as you look at that uh, table, uh, there's a uh, young man standing there and there's a very uh, attractive young woman sitting next to him. And, uh, and so he, he's holding up this wine glass and he's, he's lightly rapping on it. He says, your attention, please, if I may have your attention. I... Uh, my my name is I forgot your name. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Jonathan Copperfield, and he has a distinct uh, British accent. My name is Jonathan Copperfield, and I would like to invite you all to be our guests. As he looks down at the young woman next to him, at our wedding, which will be here aboard this vessel in two days, and we would like to. 
thank the captain for agreeing to uh, marry us on the uh, on the high seas uh, as as I uh, Jonathan Copperfield take this beautiful young woman Judith Farnsworth to be my lawfully wedded wife and there's you know applause ringing out and uh, and Jonathan says uh, please champagne champagne for everyone please thank you thank you thank you Good old chap and Judith stands up and she's blushing and she's oh and she she falls into Jonathan's arms and and they uh, they hug and kiss and and the stewards again you know as with like every chorus where you know suddenly there's just you know tons of them coming out you know there's a there's a bunch of stewards coming out each with a silver tray and you're, you know they're all loaded with uh, champagne flutes and um and so yeah the uh, the stewards are coming out and uh and bringing these out um uh, and so the uh, the same um the same bearded uh you know black bearded uh uh steward is is bringing the uh, champagne flutes for you guys um you guys can all do uh psychology rolls please Ooh, 29 Ooh, 32 out of no. actually no that, that is a pass i do have points in psychology that is a pass 34 anybody have a hard success okay uh i mean yeah I mean, other than you know he looks um, a little out of place. I mean, stewards are typically uh, clean shaven, you know, clean cut, short hair. You know, um, all of the stewards have a very similar look, which kind of makes them invisible. You know, it's, you know, each, each one looks like the other. Uh, but this guy, he kind of stands out a little bit. Anyways, he, uh, he passes champagne flutes out to uh, everyone. And, um, uh, and the captain, you know, he kind of, you know, as he kind of, he, his eyes roll a little bit as he, uh, as he sees the steward with the beard, but, uh, he, he accepts the champagne and says, okay, thank you very much. And, uh, and so, uh, the captain stands and, and says, uh, uh, a toast, if you will, to the, to the bride and groom, bride and groom. And then everybody takes a takes a sip. <laughs> Thought you were taking a sip of cat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I say, Captain, um, they are a very uh, charming couple. Did you know them before they came aboard? No, no, but uh, uh, they are so in love, and uh, I so rarely get the opportunity to. Uh, to conduct a wedding, so I'm I'm very much looking forward to this. This should be um, the highlight of the voyage, I would think. Now, did you choose a Tuesday, or did they? Uh, I believe they wanted to uh, uh, pick it because of the the position of the of the ocean. They wanted to kind of mm. be in the middle of the world, if, as you will. That's true. It's pretty much the center of the voyage. Well, it's very charming. And uh, if I may ask, that steward, he also sat us. He seems, a, 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 he's a giant of a fellow. Um, I feel like generally stewards are, are young whippets. Yes, 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 uh, yes. Well, well, the uh, the the White Star Line prides itself on uh, on uh, hiring all sorts of individuals. Yes. Must be a new policy. Well, if there's any, um... you can make another psychology roll. Nope. Okay. No one. Okay. Yep. Yep. He says that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so. So. Uh, and and he, you know continues with the small talk does does the uh does that steward seem to be just acting like 
the the other stewards just sort of regular working for the job. most part uh for the most part he uh uh he's uh stand, you know when not actively engaged uh in a service he's uh standing by the wall to uh to receive uh, a request from any nearby table uh whereas all the other stewards uh seem to be standing in a a pretty uh formalized you know kind of in the military we would call it a parade rest kind of stance you know hands behind the back feet you know shoulder uh width apart uh and just you know it's a very casual comfortable uh position to stand in for a long period of time he seems to be a little more uh uh lackadaisical a little more casual uh than that um uh since you seem to be trying to observe him go ahead and give me a spot hidden okay oh that's complete fail yeah okay not a problem uh so does anyone have anything else they want to uh to do the the tea service will probably last uh straight through until about 7 p.m so that'll end up being four ser- four servings, four courses. Excellent. How's our friend uh, Taft doing? Uh, yeah, Taft, um, probably, not surprising, hard to tell. Taft uh, seems to be kind of... Well, uh, well, he ate three plates full, so he's falling asleep. Will there be a brandy or a port uh, after afterwards? Uh, most certainly. That could and uh, um, typically you can take those types of drinks in the lounge. You know, there's a lots of uh, smoking and and uh, sherry and port in the in the lounge. That sounds delightful. So as uh, as the evening is uh, pushing on, it starts to get to about seven o'clock, end of the uh, uh, period. Uh, uh, the captain uh, stands and says, "Gentlemen, ladies, it has been my pleasure to uh, share this meal with you this evening. I I do hope that you find the rest of the voyage to be equally entertaining and and enjoyable." Thank you. And. Uh, Joanna, uh, she also begins to stand, and and uh, and she says, oh, "My goodness, it it is that time," and uh, and she's she seems to be Taft is is really kind of you know kind of sitting there and you know chin to chest, and he's like, oh, oh. and you can almost kind of hear his gut burbling, and uh, Joanna's like, "Oh my dear God." Get a grip, man. And Joanna just kind of goes, Mrs. Osterman, uh, would you like me to see you to your cabin? It seems your uh, accompaniment is uh, indisposed. Um, thank you. That will not be necessary. Well. And, and she, she snaps again, and uh, two stewards uh, approach. One of them is the, the bearded uh, steward. Uh, the other one has a, a handlebar mustache. And uh, she says, uh, Mr. Taft needs to be uh, escorted back to his cabin. And the, the steward's like, mm-hmm. and they just kind of, you know, start kind of hefting him up out of his chair. And Taft is like, oh, is it time to go? Is it time to go already? It would appear that way, old sport. You're uh, your little beat. Shut up, Vanderbilt. And he doesn't even realize that, that was Catherine. Um, and so the stewards are like, and Catherine's like, uh, Joanna's like, yes, yes. So, oh. and, uh, and so she's kind of following them out. Gusty, you must make an effort to torment that man more. <laughs> what He's tormented by that? his miserable life. One um, of these days, yeah. Do you know which of your relatives has crossed him so that he's uh, particularly oh, irritated by you? I have no idea. I mean, there's a lot of Vanderbilts. Well, not too many, I'm sure. 
Perhaps his great-great-grandmother got tied up by a villain and laid on the railroad tracks that my <laughs> great-great-grandfather built. Yes, you, they, your ancestors really should have made your tracks uh, rope-resistant or something. You know, It was her that was not rope-resistant. You know. <laughs> let's, let's move into the lounge and have some uh, tea and brandy. I mean, uh, brandy and... Uh, Sounds splendid. I don't have oh, any brandy and more brandy, <laughs> brandy and brandy, and port. Yeah. Oh, blast! I left my cigarettes up in my room. <sighs> I, I, I've got some cigarettes here. Yeah. Yes, I've got plenty as well. Oh, have some. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and you said something about cards. Perhaps we can get some card games. And Catherine, do you play? <laughs> Oh, I wouldn't want to take all your money. Does Catherine play? I think that if we played for the next 4,000 years, you wouldn't be able to take all of my money. Oh, oh, I think <laughs> I think we could arrange that for sure. Well, I'm not going to bet all of my money. Depends on the stakes <laughs> after all, yes. We'll, we'll keep it to low stakes, just, just 500 or a hand. That sounds reasonable. Uh, so you guys are going to head to the lounge. Yeah. Uh, and the lounge is uh, located up on a deck. Um, you are the dining room is is on B deck, uh, so you can uh, uh, actually just simply take the grand stairwell that's uh, right there and uh, take that up to the lounge. All right. Perfect. So dusk is probably what seven thirty. Yep. If it's June and we're. Yeah. Yep. The sun is real low, but there's a you know the sky the horizon is an orange band right now. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, so as you guys uh, ascend to the lounge, the lounge is. Uh, uh, Unlike the dining room, it's not really closed off. It has some some doors uh, to kind of uh, muffle the the sound of the ocean waves and things like that um, from the uh, from the uh, starboard and port sides of the lounge. But it's open to uh, the interior of the uh, of the ship, running uh, from aft and stern. I mean, from bow to stern. Um, and uh, so as you guys kind of get into the uh, lounge area, uh, you guys can, each of you make a spot hidden. Ooh, 19. That is a, a, a hard. Well, you don't have to brag about it, Mr. Oh, Vanderbilt. I only got your regular pass. Uh, so as y'all are kind of uh, finding a table, you know, um, that uh, has good lighting and, you know, oh, this is where you, you feel like you want to be uh, uh, playing cards and, and relaxing for the evening. Uh, you have a pretty good view uh, down this long corridor uh, of, you know, just staterooms, right? Just this uh, corridor of staterooms. And, uh, and of course there's lots of people, you know, moving about and whatnot, but, um, um, uh, uh, both, uh, Gusty and, and Catherine, as y'all are, you know, approaching the table, your eyes look down this corridor and, uh, and you do see, um, uh, Joanna Osterman, who you had dinner with. And then there's another, uh, older, uh, woman, uh, who seems to be, uh, uh, having a conversation with her um, and they seem to be kind of in a, in a quite earnest uh, conversation. The, uh, the, the woman who you do not recognize uh, seems to be trying to uh, get Joanna's attention, talking to her, you know, uh, as, as Joanna has her back to her and she's she's you know trying to use her keys to get into her cabin and uh and the older woman the other older woman um even just kind of just gently you know puts one hand on on her arm just trying to like you know 
clearly in a, in an effort to uh, get her attention, to focus on her, to, to stop with the, you know, trying to escape into her cabin. And, uh, and uh, when she puts her hand on her arm like that, uh, Joanna, you know, just kind of snatches her arm back and, and seems to be saying something. They're quite a distance away. So you can't hear what they're saying. Uh, and plus there's other traffic of people in the way. So sometimes your view is a little bit obstructed, but it clears almost immediately. But uh, you can see that uh, Joanna seems quite perturbed at, um, at this other woman trying to, to uh, talk to her and get her attention. And uh, so then she snatches her arm away and uh, she's able to then open her door, enter her cabin and, and that door slams quite hard uh right in the face of this older woman who uh who seems to um be walking away so she's going in the opposite direction of you uh but with her head bowed and and possibly sobbing is she is she dressed like one of us yes yeah she's dressed uh, very nicely did we hmm. maybe by chance see her at the 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 the, the tea uh, give me a uh, an idea roll. Fifty one out of eighty five. You do recall seeing her at one of the other tables. In fact, she was seated at the same table as uh, Jonathan and Julie. Julie, right, but we don't know who she is. You do not know who she is. Hmm. Well, hmm. Uh, perhaps we'll find out later. Anyways, have some pork. Interesting. Brandy. I wonder if we should check on uh, Lady Osterman just to make sure she's okay. It's none of our business. Oh, she's a tough old bird. She'll be fine. You should be worried more about your uh, dwindling stack there, George. <sighs> now, I, if we play, guys, there are four of us. It seems civilized to play contract bridge. Uh, so it's a question of how many, uh, how much to wager per rubber. And whether we choose partners or uh, draw for them. Because frankly, it would be most unfair if Catherine and I were on the same team. We have a bit of a rapport. Well, then we should break you up. Because <laughs> George and I are terrible bridge oh, players. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Barely know how to play cards myself. Know thyself. All right. Uh, Catherine, uh, why don't you uh, uh, guide Gusty through a, a few rubbers and we'll see whether they lose their shirts. Oh, yes. Well, time will tell. Each of you may uh, make a luck roll. I have 80 luck and an 85 is not going <laughs> to... a 53 out of 55. At a 36 out of 70, so just off. And I am way off. I've missed it by 17. Uh, well, definitely by the end of the evening, uh, Rockefeller is the big winner. Um, Catherine is uh, definitely uh, lighter in pocket, in pocketbook, than, uh, than what she started. And uh, George is also lighter. And Gusty is pretty much broke even. Uh, but uh, the big winner is definitely Rockefeller. Uh, we'll put all the lounge drinks on my tab, folks. It's the least I can do. Oh, that's nice. That's a fun game, ladies and uh, gentlemen. So let's advance to Monday the 18th. How do you spend your Monday? I want to do some reading on deck. I'm going to spend more time at the Turkish bath. It's quite a, it's quite a good time there. There is a masseur on staff. Uh, skeet after breakfast, George. Oh, that sounds splendid, splendid, Richard. Excellent. Excellent. Sit the where I can watch little... them playing skeet. Yeah. Skeet shooting. Excellent. Uh, so to uh, to play skeet, you uh, 
basically, since there is uh, such a demand for it, you uh, put your name on a list with the uh, inquiry office, uh, and then uh, a steward will be dispatched to find you when it is your time. And uh, soon enough, uh, an, a steward does approach uh, uh, Mr. Rockefeller and says that, uh, that uh, your, your time slot is available now. Breeze. Ole, thank you, lad. Uh, George, a little wager on our game? Certainly. That's, uh, that's absolutely fine. Let All us. right. Let us. Go. Um, so the, uh, the, they have uh, two uh, types of shotguns, two double barreled shotguns that are available for use, um, a 12 gauge. Uh, they also offer a 20 gauge, but that's basically known as the ladies' gun. Um, so, does anyone have um, skill in shotgun? Then you may use your own skill uh, as opposed to the base value. Um, who would like to go first? Oh, Richard? Oh, come, George. I invited you. Oh, certainly. All right. I will certainly step up. All right. You get you get five shots. So okay. uh, go ahead and make five uh, shotgun rolls. All right. The first one is a miss. <laughs> okay. Come on, George. Followed, you can do it. Followed by a miss. You need to point the gun at the clay <laughs> pigeon. Oh, dear God. And I actually have a pretty good shotgun. Uh, sure, yeah. just, just, just imagine that they're flying lions. Is, is Catherine yelling the breeze, all George. the way she from the... to... Oh, you might... dear Lord. <laughs> My sarcasm knows no bounds. <laughs> okay, here's the last one. <laughs> hey, I, I finally hit it. <laughs> oh, good. And, and how was that? It was standard, hard... A 30 out of 55. Everything else I rolled was 72 to 98. <laughs> All right. So uh, 30 out of 55, that would be still a standard yeah, a success. Yeah. All right. Um, I think you're adjusting. You needed a little warm up. There's a bit of a breeze. I would only think you winged one steward. <laughs> yeah. Richard, if you will give us five shots. That's a miss, and a thorough one. That's a miss, but better. That's a, a extreme hit, a nine. Ooh, nice. That was good. Oh, Richard? 29 is just a success. And 97 is dangerous to my fellow. <laughs> good show, Richard. Good show. Uh, all right, yeah. There's a there's a smattering of applause from nearby uh, observers as well. And and I, I give uh, Richard the the fifty passengers. And I admit, sir, it's harder than it looks. I think there's a bitter. A bit, I think we can't judge the breeze very well because we're moving. That could be quite fun, exhilarating. Excellent. Excellent. Perhaps if they, they were sh if they were flinging lions up into the air, it would have done better. I have to make that suggestion to the captain. That's my guess. And Gusty, I'll sign up for another round if you'd care to. Well, I'm not much of a, of a shooter, but I'll, I'll I'll give it a go. All right. Uh, so base value is thirty percent. Oh, so, I've got 25 as my base. So, Oh, wait, are you telling me that's what it I'm, is? I'm telling you, right. you, you can start with 30%. All right. Let's see. Pull! This, this was written for 5th uh, edition, though, so... Uh, <laughs> nope, missed. Pull! Oh, I got a 16. That is a... That'll still be a standard hit. Standard hit. Pull. 80. Nope. Ooh. 88. Pull. Uh, 60. Nope. So I got one. You got one. I got one. All right. 
try your luck. I only have a 35 myself, so. 51. 20. Kicks back on your shoulder, doesn't it? 77. 89. 83. Well, it's a draw, Gusty. And yes, it does, especially the Definitely second time. a difficult game. It was fun. I kept picturing Taft's head flying through the air. <laughs> I think we've earned ourselves a bit of refreshment before lunch. What say you? Mint julep or Ooh, bourbon? That sounds delicious. Yeah. Okay. Off to lounge. I think an Irish coffee for me. Let's go see ah. if Catherine's done lounging around in the sweat and the steam and see if she'd like to join us. I'll see if she's decent, but the odds are very slight. I don't think she cares. So how will you be spending this afternoon? Wedding's tomorrow, right? The wedding is tomorrow. Okay. Um, just relaxing. Yeah. Chit-chatting, yeah. drinking. I'm going to try to see if I can identify who the older woman was. Okay, what would you like to do? I don't know. I'll wander about smoking and see if I recognize her, and I'll just I'll walk up and I'll... Uh, when I'm close up to her, do I recognize her? Okay. Um, and I'm, I'm actually meaning, do I recognize who she actually is? Right, right. Uh, all right. Uh, so I'll get to Gusty then on that. Uh, what does everyone else want to do? We have a telegraph service on board, right? Absolutely. I'm going to send a, a telegram uh, to a, a relative more active in the business to ask whether I should be um, trying to make any hay of the presence of this Osterman woman. Uh, new technologies, um, automotive stuff is interesting, but I don't really pay that much attention to business, but my uncle or someone will, will probably care. Okay. All right. Uh, I've also George? got this translation of Tolstoy I'm going to try to read, but oh, it's, it's very slow going. You have plenty of time for it. George? I'll try to find the uh, the latest news. If there's any uh, telegraphed uh, news stories or papers, I'm not sure how that's transferred, but I'll keep abreast. Oh, that's, of a, that's an interesting idea. So I bet um, for uh, first-class passengers... Um, the ship probably prints a probably a two page uh, uh, news sheet that they take off of the you know off the wire typeset and print this off so it, it becomes something of a um, you know of a luxury service like here's today's news well here's yesterday's news yeah. you know via the ship right so, uh, so you can read a two-page newspaper uh, that they uh, have available in the lounge, which has all of yesterday's news. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll go peruse that and enjoy a beverage, and uh, go stroll out on the deck and maybe see if I can later catch up with uh, Gusty. Okay, Catherine. Oh well, the uh, the pool has been fun, but I think. Um lounging and smoking some cigarettes is a fine way to spend the rest of the afternoon. Okay. All right. Uh, so you guys are lounging. Richard is doing the telegraph and Gusty, as you're walking around, you do eventually run into uh, a woman uh, at first. Um, uh, you weren't quite sure because uh, she is wearing a rather large hat. Um, but uh, as you were kind of approaching, um, she did finally uh, she she's in a lounge chair reading and then finally as you were kind of approaching she did look up in order to address a steward for another drink and then once she looked up and the hat kind of you know came back enough you were able to see her face and and that's her that's the woman who was having the the um the definite exchange with right. um uh, osterman but to see her doesn't trigger any bells like so she's not countess fawn right i mean well you know there's there are plenty of people who are 
uh, well to do that you don't know them all, you know. So, okay. So, as I am approaching, you said she's in a, a deck chair. She's in a deck chair. I will, uh, so I'm walking up to her. I'll say, oh, lovely weather, isn't it? Uh, and she looks up and uh, she uh, she looks to be in her 60s, uh, like uh, Osterman. And uh, she says, oh, yes, it's a it's a beautiful day. We've been making very good time. Um, fortunately, no, no storms or choppy water. It's been quite smooth. Would you mind if I sit here? Oh, please be my guest. Yes, mm. it's, it is lovely. I, I do prefer the, the ocean like this, very calm. Um, have you been, uh, are you going, I, I'm, uh, I'll do it this way. I have chit chatty conversation with her, um, about going to Belfast and what she's doing and who she is and so forth. Yeah. So, uh, she introduced herself as, uh, Elizabeth Dodd and, uh, she's, uh, she says that she's just, you know, she's a widower or she's a widow She's a widow, and uh, um, she, uh, you know, spends her time traveling, uh, seeing the world. Uh, she's she's um, uh, making her way uh, uh, with with quite some uh, side trekking, but she's making her way slowly to Paris, uh, where she'll uh, finish uh, summering in uh, Paris. Oh, that and uh, lovely. Yeah. and then eventually, you know, she'll uh, she'll winter in uh, Rio de Janeiro again. Uh, but uh, yeah, she's just kind of you know making a a, a looping trip uh, to Ireland and through England and then eventually down to Paris. I couldn't help but notice though that you were at the table with uh, the the couple that's getting married tomorrow are you a friend of the uh, family or no i just met that but such a beautiful young couple i i just cannot wait a wedding a wedding i can't I, i'm just so looking forward to it it you know they they deserve all the happiness in the world it's one just of the things couple. that uh, you know captains have the privilege of being able to marry people it's interesting it's so exciting we were uh, stuck at the captain's table. I, I say stuck. The captain's lovely, and most of the others were quite uh, engaging, except for Taft. Um, mm. He seems to be with somebody rather um, lovely. Uh, I didn't write down her name. What was her name? Um, Ost Ost Osterman? Joanna Osterman. Osterman. Miss Osterman. Um, oh, Oh, she was uh, Joanna's traveling with that young man. Well, they were together at the table anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, uh, you can make a uh, psychology. Okay. Um, passed it by five points. She seems very uh, upset at the name uh, of, of the mention of Joanna Osterman's name. Um, and uh, and she seems to to just kind of uh, her lip is starting to quiver. I'm I'm sorry, darling. Um, did I say something wrong? Uh, oh, it's not you. It's I don't know. I just I don't understand. I Joanna was such a dear dear friend, and we have spent uh, we've we've vacationed together. Why she and I have have in the past summered in in Paris, and yet she acts as if she doesn't even know me. It's it's just so hurtful, so How hurtful. Very strange. And you're sure that it's her? Oh my goodness, yes, yes. I, I it, it's my Joanna, but she's just she's just so so crass and 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 just so rude. It's just. It's breaking my heart. I, I don't understand. And, and you can't I just recall, don't understand. You can't recall that you had a falling out or anything? 
I can't understand. I don't know what would have happened. She, you know, uh, you know, lives in New York, and and uh, and while uh, you know, I like to travel, I I hadn't seen her through the winter, uh, but I, you know, I was so surprised to to see her on the ship. I I didn't even realize that she was um, that she was going to be uh, uh, on this voyage and. I don't know. It just it breaks my heart. I, we we were so close for so long, and and now and now it's like she doesn't even know me. I I, I just don't understand. It just that that seems extremely unusual. I mean, could she have bumped her head and gotten amnesia or something? I don't know. It it breaks my heart. It just it truly breaks my heart. It's I'm so upset. I just well, don't know I, what to I'd do. I'd say what 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 you what you should probably do is see if you could find out what what reason she has for shunning you. Uh, it makes it makes no sense to you. Um, I don't know. She she doesn't want to speak to me, and and has made it quite plain that uh, she will have nothing to do with me. So strange. I I will sip my champagne and read my book and. Travel alone. I'm so sorry. You don't need to hear an old woman uh, feeling sorry for herself. It's quite all right, darling. I, I'm on vacation. I I like to talk to people. Oh, you are such a nice young man. Thank you. Thank you. You have made my day. Well, um, perhaps later you can join us for dinner. Um, uh, you'll see me. Oh, yeah. I just forgot I had an appointment at the Turkish bath. Um, it's very nice talking to you. It was very nice to meet you too, Mr. Vanderbilt. Thank you. And I get up and walk away. So I got to go tell everybody. <laughs> okay. My character is a bit of a gossip. So No. Yeah. He's also pretty good at wheedling the information out of people. So you'll never guess. And I tell them the whole story. Okay. So it is, uh, uh, they call it dinner, but it's lunchtime. Dinner and then supper. Yes. Well, they, and they call supper tea. So they have breakfast, dinner, and tea. So what do you all think? She claims to have traveled many places with uh, Miss Osterman. And now Miss Osterman seems to not know who she is. Either she's delusional or Miss Osterman's bumped her head. John, have I gotten any telegram back? Um, you, uh, the telegraph, uh, the wire operator um, uh, says that you probably shouldn't expect a response today, uh, that it probably will take time for it to reach its destination, have a, have a response drafted and then set back uh, to you um, so it could be tomorrow at the earliest but probably two days from now is when you would most likely expect to see a response um, I don't know uh, Gusty either uh, one of the older ladies is daft or the other one is um, anybody quite... care for a wager about which there's nothing about either one of them that seemed very off-putting. Quite honestly, I thought Miss Aus uh, uh, Ostentatious or whatever her name was, um, she seemed a bit more aloof. One, yeah. Well, and if she's with that Taft fellow, she's having a, a you know rather a bit of a drudgery. I wonder if it's something more complicated, like in an old story that there's. Perhaps she's trying to protect the old lady from maybe Taft has something on her other than his enormous frame. Well, I'll, Richard, I'll, I'll place $30 on it being uh, uh, Osterman. Catherine Can I get out my little book where I keep track of my wagers? Very good, Catherine. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll cover that. Uh, I'll 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 give you two to one on that, 
uh, I no, thought no. Ms. Osterman seemed all, all together there. And we haven't met this, uh, what, Dodd is your name? She yes, Elizabeth be, Dodd. You could be quite daft and Gusty wouldn't notice. I thought at first she said Todd. I was going to say if she related to Abraham Lincoln. That would be cause for misfortune. Doubly you know, widowed then. Hmm. So are y'all going to uh, have uh, dinner, have lunch? Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. I thought I, I sort of pictured that as this conversation happening over. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, so you guys are uh, are in the dining room and uh, yeah, being served. I asked her. I asked her to to have dinner with us, so maybe she'll uh, show up and you can decide for yourself. She didn't seem like a crazy old bat. Oh, oh, there she. What <laughs> <laughs> is filet mignon tonight? Uh, usually not uh, filet mignon is usually uh, not at lunch. Uh, there's some oh. sort of a uh, chicken or fish. Uh, yes, yes during George. The, uh, when they say dinner, they really mean lunch. I know the ways of Europeans are strange, but uh, alas, they are the way they are. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, Miss uh, Miss Dodd uh, does come uh, into the uh, uh, into the dining area, and uh, she's being uh, escorted by a steward. And uh, and oh, she 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 taps on the steward's shoulder and kind of points at uh, at y'all's table, and so she's brought to your table. Is Ulsterman present for for dinner? Make a spot hidden. Please, Miss Dodd, sit here. No, I am a little oblivious. I'm not really not really paying it. I'm casually glancing, but I don't really care. So. Sure, sure. Because there are lots of people. It's not like y'all are the only ones here. The, the room is is filling in pretty well. Uh, so it's hard to see all the nooks and crannies. Uh, but yeah, Miss Dodd uh, uh, sits down. She says, oh, Mr. Vanderbilt, thank you so much for this invitation. I, You certainly didn't have to. Why not? We're all on vacation. Oh, I introduced myself to her. I've not met her. Oh. George, first. Pleased. Pleasure. My, very nice to meet you. Uh, Richard Rockefeller, madam. Uh, lovely to see you. Elizabeth Dodd. Well, that's um, a very lovely dress you're wearing, Elizabeth. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're such a nice young lady. Thank you so much. Uh, what's your final destination, Ms. Dodd? And this is Doug. Yeah, so she uh, she talks about how oh I'm heading to Paris. I, I hope to spend the summer in Paris. I I have a a, a little chateau that I uh, rent out uh, and uh, enjoy my stay there. It's beautiful. Uh, yes, Paris is lovely this time of year. Paris is lovely all throughout the year. Agreed. I love Paris. Uh, everyone well, can oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, well, in honor of your destination of Paris, uh, I'd call a bell hop over and get some uh, French wine. Oh, the table. Oh, what do you mean? It's French sparkling wine, Chateau Boyle, 1980. <laughs> <laughs> She's, oh, that's not very old. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so as you guys are in the room here, um, you can all make a... Um, you guys can all make a... I'm going to say a spot hidden. Seems like I'm still not paying attention. Uh, hard. Oh, good. Got a start nope. failing. All right. 96, how was yours? Oh, very nice. <laughs> it's just 81. <laughs> Gusty. It, uh, it, it would be appropriate that it's actually you. Um, uh, Gusty, it, uh, it occurs to you that uh, the blowhard Taft is not here. And Taft is not one to miss, miss a meal. meal. Well, I don't see Taft. 
Yeah, he's hard to miss, too. I knew this lunch was a little too pleasant. Or dinner, or what have you. And maybe he was meal. sicker than uh, he let on last night. No, he was letting see... on pretty pretty strong. I don't see Miss Osterman either, do I? That is correct. Hmm. I wonder if he fell ill. I hope not. I mean, I don't like the man, but I don't wish him unwell. Wait, wait, Gusty, do you think that those two are traveling, no, 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 like, no. together together? No, no, please, Catherine. No, 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 no. I will not picture an afternoon tryst between those two. It is not. Oh, like but I'm sure you already have, Richard. I'm sure you already have. Well, they came in together um, last night. I guess that was an assumption we couldn't. To be fair, to be fair, the four of you also came in together. Right. It's, it could be an assumption that we shouldn't make. Um uh, Elizabeth here thinks that uh, it doesn't make much sense. Uh, but then again, uh, she's been acting very strangely toward Miss, uh, Miss Dodd. I wonder if she's under some sort of unusual stress. I don't know. Um, should, I don't know that we should alert anyone. I suppose if we don't see them at, uh, at tea, that we should say something to the steward. You know, we could have something sent to his cabin. A bromo, perhaps? Bromo uh, salsa. And then if he doesn't respond, we uh, we will know that there's room for concern. Otherwise, I'm sure he'll appreciate the thoughtful gesture. As long as you're the one sending it, Richard. Hey. <laughs> he, won't, he won't take anything from Gusty, I'm sure. Maybe we uh, should just send him a bucket. <laughs> I imagine Old Taft travels with a bucket, don't you? Uh, so I'll call oh, for he... a steward and, and, and have, uh, have the delivery made. I'm sure, okay. yes, uh, a bucket or his uh, own personal vomitorium, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you mean Even a barrel. Generous state rooms <laughs> are hard to uh, accommodate certain conveniences. All right. Well, and perhaps a note of some sort. Yeah, I guess with the Bromo, a, a note that says, hope you're feeling better, Richard R. Oh, or uh, I could I could write the note. Well, I wouldn't want him getting any ideas. Mm, fair point. Fair point, indeed. Just write the note and send the Bromo. And we'll see if we see him at dinner at, uh, what do they call it, tea? Besides, if I sent the note, I might make uh, Joanna a little jealous. I don't want to do that. She already seems a bit on uh, not herself. So Gusty tells us that you don't know the bride and groom, or didn't until yesterday. Oh, that's true. I, I you know, I meet so many uh, wonderful people on these trips, and uh, Jonathan and Judith are just such a lovely couple. Uh, he, uh, he, he's an Englishman, yes? Yes, yes. She, she also? Uh, no, no, she's, uh, she's a, a New Yorker, and um, uh, I, you know, they've had a whirlwind romance, and uh, I believe they're looking to settle down in London. Transatlantic romance on a transatlantic voyage. Yeah, that's very charming. Of course, we have our, uh, you know... Uh, white tie for supper, but I wish there were something special I could wear for the occasion. Oh, yes. I, I believe they insisted on people just simply uh, being comfortable in their uh, evening dinner attire. You know what suddenly occurs to me? Um, Elizabeth, you said you hadn't seen um, Joanna in a year or so? Oh, more than six months, but yes, thereabouts. Um, and I'm sure you know her well. Did you actually get a really good look at her last night? I'm, I'm, but what I'm going at is, could she be an imposter? Wow. Cleverly crafted imposter. Uh, Richard, I'd like to put $30 on uh, it being Gusty, who's out of his mind. <laughs> you Catherine, your gambling is getting way out of hand. And I'm not sure I can cover that one, dear. Uh, so at that mention, at that mention, Miss Dodd, uh, 
she leans forward and puts her hand on you, uh, Gusty, and she says, you know, I've been having those secret fears, but I, I didn't want to believe it myself. I, I just, I don't think that she's really Joanna. Well, I can't think for the life of me why she wouldn't acknowledge who you were. I don't know. I don't know. And that's what I'm believing the same. It's not her. It's not her, but I don't know who she is. Calm down, darling. Listen, I think that this is worthy of a, a bit of an investigation, don't you? Um, I'm not getting any organic Karenina, I can tell you that. I'm sorry, so, what did you say? I'm trying to read this Tolstoy novel and I can't get anywhere, so I think a bit of a mystery would be, uh, would help pass the week. Oh, you said Anna Karenina, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, I think we could have some fun with this. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I just... I don't know. I felt like I was going out of my mind. I just don't know. Well, don't upset yourself, darling. Did uh, mm. did you know that uh, your friend Mrs. Osterman knew Taft? No, not a clue. I, I, I just assumed she met him on the on the voyage. Okay. And you last saw her about six months ago. Where was that? Oh, we had uh, just concluded. Uh, uh, traveling uh, through Spain and uh, and Madrid, and then uh, met, you know separated as we went our own ways for the winter. Oh, so you had not merely seen her six months ago; you had traveled with her just in the oh, last yes. year. Oh yes! Oh no, yes! Really well then. Well, that's curious that she would snub you. I wonder. She doesn't seem afraid in any way, did she? No, she seemed cruel. Mm -hmm. Like a full personality change. Very it broke, odd. It just it broke my heart. When you first approached her, did she immediately react to you as if she didn't know who you were? That's that's so funny. Yes, it's like she didn't know who I was, and until I insisted on pressing myself onto her, and then that just it it rackled her and it raised her ire, and and it just it, she was so. So verbally cruel it, it, and hurtful, I, I just, I didn't know it, it. It just it hurt me so. You know, I'm wondering if we, if we try one of those, you know, funny little things I saw in a, um, the, uh, what do they call them? Detective novels. We could go up to her and say, "You said she was in Spain last year." We could say, "You know, Miss Osterman, I thought that I saw you. We met in Spain last year. Do you remember?" And then if she lies and says, oh, yes, of course. Well, no, if she lies, then we won't know anything since she was in Spain last year. We'll know that she's lying. In recall, in recall. Not if she was in Spain last year. Oh, you have to ask her if she was in France last year, Gusty. All right, perhaps you're better at this than I am. <laughs> in fact, Catherine, you might be able to get closer to her than we do. Yes. Um, well, she must speak German, isn't that right, Mrs. Dodd? Well, yes, she's of German heritage. Right, and she speaks English. Do you know what other languages she speaks, having traveled with her? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, she she's quite fr uh, fluent in French, mm -hmm. um, and and while her family is German, um, uh, she herself is was a uh, you know American born, but uh, she does speak German quite well. Um, French, she said. Oh, yes. French. She's quite good at. Oh, she's very good at French. Good she at French. speaks German quite well and some Spanish. Um, we're we're all, we get by, you know, as as we can. Certainly, the necessities of travel. I'm just wondering if we could approach her with a, a language she should speak but doesn't, or shouldn't speak but does. That would be quite telling. How how many years have you known Mrs. Osterman? Oh, we've been traveling for the last five years. No, yes. really well. Well, I've got Spanish, French, and Dutch down pretty well. I don't have German. Well, I have English and the King's English. You know, you uh, Americans really need to learn more languages. Everyone's learning English by force, so I think it'll be all right. 
but it wouldn't be handy. Uh, you should you should say something to her in German and see whether she uh, looks confused. If she doesn't speak her family tongue, then we'll know she's someone uh, falsifying her identity. You could spill a cocktail on her and say Auf Wiedersehen or whatever you people say. Oh, well, the, I don't know if you know this, Richard, but uh, spilling uh, cocktails on women is not a great uh, conversation starter. It's hard to ignore, though. Exactly. It may be the, hard to ignore, but perhaps the wrong kind of attention. Very well. So, Mrs. Dodd, what else uh, can you tell us about the uh, Osterman that you knew so that we can um, perhaps eventually devise a cleverer plan. Well, I, I, I'm just, I'm so flustered. I, I don't know what to think or what to say. I, I don't know if it's not her. I, well, I, I just don't know. I, we've spent so many days in Paris, um, with the, uh, on the cafes and, and, uh, uh, touring the Louvre and I'm just so flustered I, I don't know might How you about... oh, pardon me might you send a telegraph to her family back home you could find out overnight if she's actually still there oh she's um, she is like me a, a widow and uh, she had no children so um, she's she's alone like me which is why we were such uh, good friends and, 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 and made it perfect to travel together. How about appurtenances? Does she still wear her red wedding ring? Does she travel with anything distinct that uh, might indicate that she, uh, you know, if she doesn't have something, she could be an imposter? She, she would have, she does wear her ring still, yes. And did she have it on her when you spoke to her? Well, now I'm, I don't recall. I, I probably had too much to drink last night. Oh, oh, bother. Oh, darling, we'll, we'll take care of this. We'll find out what's going on. We have to have a confrontation. We'll do it. Yeah, I just I... don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. Well, madam, I think you should uh, have a, a, a milky tea and a little bit of a lie down after lunch and let your new friends take care of this matter for you. Oh, you're here. You are all so wonderful, so kind to, to, a, to an old woman. I, I thank you so much. Of course. Okay. So, what do you want to do? Well, after lunch, how should we devise this? Yes, let's let's find a corner of the lounge where we can scheme. Catherine, I think my money is very good. That uh, that Dodd woman seems fragile. Um, but uh, how do we how do we resolve the bet if it turns out that they're both sane, but Osterman's a, you know a, a a Frenchman in disguise? Well, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be the first time somebody's pretended to be someone who they weren't. Um, the thing is, either one of them could be that, but I believe Miss Dodd because she has nothing to gain from pretending to know. She wouldn't draw attention to herself if she were an imposter like this. Right. Well, Richard, you, you gave me two to one. Uh, and I say it's only fair if you just pay out just on a one-to-one -one ratio if it turns out that... Uh, Alsterman is an imposter. I'll bet a hundred bucks and she's a an imposter. Uh, I'll take. I'll cover that. Do, do George? Uh, no. hmm. I'm going to steer clear of this one. This. Oh, come now, George. Don't be a stick in the mud, George. <laughs> Please, do the railroads not pay you enough? These are only other people's lives that we're playing with here. I mean, what does it matter? Yeah, that's a good point. Well, I'll put down a good 50. 
Uh, before we left lunch, did uh, I had gotten a reply from Taft's cabin about the Bromo and note that I sent? Uh, no reply. All right. Um, so that's one matter, one avenue we can ex explore. We can. We could just Taft. say that we're concerned, and uh, and get the ship's doctor. I mean, there's an infirmary. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd rather go and knock on his door myself before we. Uh, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, just do a direct confrontation. And, and then we can ask Taft how he knows Osterman. Yeah. I could knock on his door man. and say, I'm here for an apology. Mm. That should rouse Not the mine. Oh, no. That'll, that'll get his, the wind up him. Uh, okay, so visit Taft. Is that the first order of business? Perhaps it is. Uh, is there is there a ship directory, or do we have to ask somebody what his cabin is? It would be just simply asking a steward. Now I'll place ten dollars that it will take uh, Taft uh, five seconds of talking to Gusty before his face goes all red. Ten dollars, Catherine. Is that all you have? What? Why would anyone no, no, risk no, a no. cent on that? What about Joanne's room? as well. Well, let's not worry about that until we find out about Taft. And George, you're trying to find a lady's room, huh? And of course, if we... She is the potential imposter. If we identify her as an imposter, then we tell the, the stewards and have her moved to third class. And she's not allowed to watch the wedding. Mm. Well, we're not heartless. All right, so uh, let's the three of us um, figure out a way to loiter casually while uh, Gusty raps on old Taft's door and we see whether he explodes violently into the causeway. Hallway? Passage? In the passage, sure. Splint. I hope that's not literal. Um. <laughs> All right. To put out my cigarette, and uh, let's let's head out. Why are you putting your cigarette out? You weren't finished. Cigarette. Uh, so after a quick consultation with the steward, you are directed to uh, Taft's cabin. All right. After old man, are you okay? The uh, there's a silver tray on the floor that has the bromide and a note, so it's sitting on the it's sitting outside the door. It looks untouched. What was his first name? Joseph. 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 There it's is gusty. a there's a do not disturb placard on the door handle, and as you knock on the door, there is no answer. I'm going to put my ear up against the door and see if I hear snoring. Make a listen roll. A 35. Oh, that's almost a heart, not quite. You hear nothing. Hmm. I look at the others down the hall and I'm like, this. And I'm going to start walking around down the hall to the outside uh, to the uh, port windows. Okay. And uh, try to peek inside. Okay. The curtains are drawn, oh. uh, but you can attempt to make a spot hidden. You're going to need a hard success. Okay. 48. No, that's the fail. No. Damn him. Well, let's voice our concern then to the doctor. There will be um, housekeeping comes by to change their... Uh... Not with the not disturb. Do not disturb. Yeah. I wonder. The, 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 the doctor should know if they've yeah. asked for assistance. Yeah. All right. We're stymied for the moment. Uh we think you did you could not see Osterman in the dining hall for dinner either, right? Correct. That's correct. Let's 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 ask for her stateroom number. 
Well, we know kind of where it is because Mm -hmm. we saw last night. But yes, I thought you just saw where. Oh, right. You saw. Right, right. I saw her go into her room. Uh, Is Osterman's room near Taft? Uh, No, I mean, same deck, but not near. No. Right. All right. Well, Um, how about this? I'll go talk to the doctor. I'm sorry. What what did you say? I just wanted to see who was going to, what excuse we're going to have to knock on Osterman's door. But if you want to go and see the doctor about Taft, that's... uh, well, I was going to say I could go to the doctor about Taft, and, and you and Catherine could go knock on his door. Catherine may have come up with some excuse. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with you, Gusty, and uh, Richard and Catherine. All right. Okay, uh, we'll see you in the lounge in 15 or 20 minutes with news. Splendid. Excellent. Maybe we'll go, by Aust- uh, we'll go by Taft's on the way in case you're outside with the doctor and that... Buff steward. All right. right. Catherine, let's think of a reason that we are knocking on this older woman's door after. Maybe, maybe, uh, just, oh, we could just say that we couldn't get Taft and we were worried about him and asked if she asked. Oh, if she's that's, seen him. That, that's a great idea. I was about to suggest that we knock on the door and say, sorry, we forgot to spill a cocktail on your dress last night. You could say that you misplaced something at dinner and we we're wondering if she saw it. Whatever. Um, I'm, I'm on the way with uh, George. Okay. So Gusty and George are heading over to the infirmary. Uh, which is on uh, B deck. So you guys are heading down to the infirmary, and um, and so you guys are heading over to uh, to Osterman's uh, door. Okay, so you all both there? Or is one you know standing out back out of the way, or what's going on? No, I just don't seem to. Uh, yeah, I think we can we can do this as as a as a pair. Okay, as a team. All right. So y'all knock on the door. Okay, uh, there is a voice on the inside. Uh, yes, who is it? Uh, Miss Ulsterman. Yes, door is still shut. She's speaking from the inside. Yes. Uh, this is a uh, uh, Catherine and Richard from from dinner last night. Uh, uh, afternoon, ma'am. Just- we were just uh, haven't seen Joseph around, and uh, since you were with him, we were just wondering if you know uh, if he's well. Uh, so the uh, the you hear the door unlocking, and the the door opens up, but it only opens up you know about this far, right? Just enough for her to stand in the doorway, and uh, she says, "Yes, I'm sorry. I I have no idea what uh, happened to Mister Taft. I." I know he was quite intoxicated, and I had the stewards uh, take him to his room. I assume that he's sleeping it off there. Oh, sorry. I guess we had just uh, assumed that the uh, that the two of you were going there together. Was it? Uh, did you met him? Know him before uh, getting arriving on the ship? No, I only met him uh, while on this voyage. Oh, much as I've met you on this voyage. And a, f- a fine voyage it's been so far, uh, Mrs. Osterman. Um, I, uh, Catherine, ask her something in French. Uh, vous pensez? I'm sorry? Oh. Oh, I was just asking if you if you speak French. Oh, well, it's been quite some time. Um, thank you for coming by. Have a good day. Sorry to bother you. Thanks very much. We'll uh, we'll check on old Joseph later. And she'll shut the door, and you hear you hear it being locked. Hmm. She may may not be a phony, but she's certainly up to something. Yes. Yes. Uh... Hmm. Her room must be very untidy. She did not want us to see it. That's for sure. Uh, Lacking in manners, skipping lunch. Uh, All very dubious. All dubious. The plot thickens. Um, Yes, I 
I'm sniffing. I'm sniffing a uh, sixty dollars from you in the future, Richard. Let's go meet the others. All uh, right, on our uh, past Osterman, uh, past um, Tafts on the way to the lounge, in case they are there, mm -hmm. we'll yes. intercept them. Uh, okay, so uh, Gusty and George, as as they were doing that, you guys head down to B deck, and uh, there's the infirmary. All right, um, here's the infirmary. Um, you can see the doctor on hand or one of the orderlies. Is there a nurse or a doctor? Uh, yeah, so there are two people uh, that work in the infirmary, um, a Dr. Jones, and then there is a, a, a yeoman who's working as a nurse. And uh, uh, as you come in, uh, the young lady says, uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, how can we help? Something, um, are you all right? Oh, we're fine. Uh, we're inquiring about our friend, Mr. Joseph Taft. Um, we haven't seen him for a couple of meals now. Oh. Um, okay. Um, is he a is, patient? Is he here? Uh, no. Uh, she looks around, uh, doctor, and uh, the he's, you know, he's in his 50s. He comes up and, and says, uh, 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 good afternoon. Uh, no, I'm afraid we don't have anyone. Uh, I'm not treating anyone at this time. Well, we're we were concerned because uh, last night at dinner, um, he became suddenly quite groggy, if you will, at the meal. I was afraid that maybe it didn't settle with him very much. Um, we knocked on his door a couple times. We sent him some bromo, but it doesn't look like he's touched it. Um, we're getting rather concerned. Well, he could just be uh, sleeping it off, but um, um, I'll uh, I'll check on him. Taft, you say? Yes, Taft. Uh, room. Uh, yep. All room right. Room. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh, excellent. I will. I will uh, get right on that. All right. Um, there's there's four of us that are quite concerned. Uh, I think our friends are still waiting there at the door, so we'll meet you there. Oh well, certainly. Uh, I'll walk with you. And uh, he uh, he you know points to the nurse, and she hands him a a little travel bag, and he kind of pops his you know looks into it real quick. And yeah, he he seems to be satisfied with the contents. He says, uh, 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 "Lead the way, please." Sure. Cigarette, doctor. Oh, I have my own. Thank you. Good for the lungs. Good for the lungs. Very good. Uh, okay, so you guys uh, get up to uh, Taft's room, and by this time, Catherine and Richard are also kind of approaching from the other direction. They're like, oh, hey, oh, hey, everyone. This so you're all kind Jones, of yes. converging simultaneously. Um, and so he sees the uh, silver platter with the uh, uh, promo, promo. Yeah. and uh, there's a note, and it's all sitting there, neat and orderly, untouched. And uh, he sees the do not display, uh, do not disturb placard on the door. Um, and uh, he, he starts knocking on the door and says, uh, Mr. Taft, this is Dr. Jones. Mr. Taft, if you have a moment, please answer the door. And there's no answer. He's, he's quite obese. Um, is there a way we can get inside? He may have had a heart attack. Hmm. Give me, uh, persuade him. And yeah, this has been a whole day. You can have a, you can yeah. have, the, that's a good story. You can have a bonus die on that persuade. Okay. I got an 18. Okay. Uh, out you of are, 35. You are persuasive. Um, so he says, yes, that, that may be prudent. Uh, it is against, uh, uh, ship's policy, but, uh, Oh, see, be damned. There could be, that man needs help. Maybe. Uh, well, uh, yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, so uh, he, he, he snaps his fingers a couple of times and, and a steward comes running up. There's always one nearby when you need him. And, uh, and he says that he needs uh, keys to this, to this cabin. And it takes about five minutes, um, but the uh, steward comes rushing back and uh, has, uh, has like a master key. And uh, uh, the doctor says, uh, uh, I will ask you all to please wait out here. Let me uh, check on the patient and I will uh, let you know. 
This is um, certainly turned into more than you expected. And he 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 asked he does ask the steward to uh, go and fetch his nurse just in case. So he unlocks the door and uh, he swings it open and says, uh, "Mr. Taft, yes, this is Doctor Jones." As I said, please, uh, I'm entering your cabin now. Uh, and he comes in. The door, you know, uh, is just he leaves it open, um, and you can see a very similar layout as what you guys have in your cabins. Uh, but uh, Dr. Jones goes in there and he's like, Mr. Taft, Mr. Taft. And uh, these are fairly, um, uh, uh, you know, these are a luxury liner. So each cabin has a private lavatory, uh, although it is quite tiny. Um, and uh, so in the, the bedroom sitting area, nobody's there. So uh, the doctor you can see is uh, rapping on the lavatory door. Uh, Mr. Taft, Mr. Taft, this is the doctor. I, I will be entering now. I'm I'm going to enter that now. And uh, so he opens up the uh, lavatory door. It's probably a pocket door, right? So it slides open. And um, and so from your angle, you can't see into the lavatory. But uh, he, the doctor, seems to lean in, poke his head in, and he he leans back out and he says. The room is empty. Mr. Taft is not here. Hmm. I'm Must sure be with Miss Ulsterman. I'm well. I'm. I would say that I'm. I'm sure he's fine since he is clearly not um, his cabin. He he must be with you know visiting others. So. Well, he was I, tremendously I, ill last night, and he's been missing for twenty four hours, just about. Well, some some people do prefer to have their uh, meals in their cabins. Well, uh, gentlemen, perhaps we're making fools out of ourselves. Uh, perhaps I... we should just wander about the decks and see if we can find him. He's not difficult to locate. Um, Doctor, uh, thank you Dr. very Jones, much. Was it? Dr. Jones, yes. Well, thank you very much, Doctor. We're sorry to have wasted your time. Ah, uh, no, it was, it was quite all right. Uh, I'm sure he would greatly appreciate to know that his friends are uh, so concerned for his health. So, thank you. Excellent. Oh, gentlemen, I have an idea. And, and so then, with that, you know, Doctor Jones will exit the cabin, and uh, he'll he'll relock it, and. Uh, and then probably at that time, the steward is returning with his nurse and he says, no, nah, everything's fine. He, he like gives the key back to the steward and, and says, oh, you know, well, let's go ahead and go. So then, then they all start to exit. So and the glance into his sitting room didn't show any sign of disorder, right? What little we could see, it wasn't like the cabin had been tossed. It was just- Correct, correct. It looked, uh, it looked, it looked like he had just left it to attend a, you know any kind of function right it's just you know it looks like he's living in the cabin so darlings how did you fare with miss osterman oh she was very standoffish doesn't speak french mm. doesn't speak french empty room so yeah, wouldn't let us in, in rather with friendly them. yeah she very she barely she opened up the door I wonder if Taft is in there. That's what I'm thinking. I wonder if we go bring the uh, the bromi to her and ask well, if she'd give it to Taft for us. Now I'm starting to lose focus of what we were originally after. We wanted to see if this was really her. You see, she doesn't speak French, but she should speak French. She seemed completely confused by it. Or at and, least she uh, doesn't understand my terrible French phrase that I've picked up. <laughs> But Catherine did follow up with a question about French, and she said that she hadn't spoken it for years, which does not sit at all with uh, Mrs. Dodd's assertions. It's also one of those things you could say if you don't speak it at all. Yeah. Yeah. So she's 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 she's, she's funny. Let's let's walk about the ship and see if we can find her. Uh, uh, tap. And uh, if we can't, I don't know, maybe we should alert someone. Maybe he fell overboard. 
He certainly didn't get out of his uh, stateroom window. Yeah, too small. Yes. But it's curious that he left the do not disturb sign. Yeah, that's that's very strange. So he went in. Did anyone witness him going in, though? So well, Miss well, the Olsterman. stewards that took him, from the stewards. The stewards. So we could get the stewards' word that they delivered him to that room. Let's talk to that funny-looking steward, the unkempt one. Yeah, because he was one of the ones that helped. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, there but, was the the bearded steward who was super tall, and then there was a handlebar mustache. mustached one. I'll look for the handlebar mustache one. Okay. Question. Yeah. Let's two no. of us take a deck, two of us take B deck. We'll do one circuit each. Uh, and we're looking for the beardy one, the, the, the mustachioed one, and our friend Joe Taft. Now, before we do that, yes. How, are you all familiar with uh, that lovely woman, um, Agatha Christie? Oh. Huh. She I writes um, rather clever detective novels. Um, for some strange reason, this all starts to feel to me like one of her little mysteries. Um, what if, what if the reason why the do not disturb sign on the door is placed there because it was placed by the person who murdered Taft and threw him overboard or and it's something you place on your door when you, you know, when you want to be together with your special lady, but she's much older than you. Well, right, except that he's not there. Right, so why but he that? wants you to think that he's there and not with his special lady friend. Well, right, yeah, but you know, if it's just a love affair, that's boring. This could easily be that. It could easily be something stupid like that. Um, but I'm hoping for something far more meaty, you know, that uh, yeah, she famous. murdered him she's an imposter and she's murdered him and put his body off the, I mean, I, the truth is we could probably use binoculars on the back of the ship. He'd float like a balloon on the... Well, so that would sell more papers. She'd never get him overboard. Yeah, to lift him, uh, she'd well, break a hip. We also have a weird steward, a steward with a beard. How strange. Yeah. Mm. The other one with the mustache is a little funny too. Well. I find that hard to believe. I find it hard to believe that anybody could um, uh, pro, was could pretend to be a steward on the ship they weren't hired for. So, yeah, they go through a vetting process, especially well, on the white. Yeah, that would be other. that possibility is absolutely absurd. But we need to track down this murderer of Taft. <laughs> I joke. This is getting fun. Uh, all right, a refreshing cocktail, and then uh, who wants to take a deck and who B? I'll take B. No, that, that seems about right for Gusty. B deck, for sure. I'll take A deck. <laughs> I'll join you, Catherine. I'll join you, Gusty. <laughs> All right. And uh, let's say, uh, it's, you know, it's a large vessel, and we don't want to miss any corners. So half an hour back in the lounge? Yeah, yes, that sounds good. It, remember, there's also the possibility he could be on C deck. Oh, there's more than a possibility. He yeah. could be slumming it on E. They well, they could be eating him. He supplied food for dozens of them. Yeah, or E a... and D deck. Yeah. Well, if the whole ship's descended to cannibalism, we've got more than a mystery on our hands. More. Well, he's... I wouldn't put it past anyone on E deck. Probably composed mostly of butter, so <laughs> he might be delectable. I'm not sure that, I mean, if he's made of butter, I don't think they have enough rolls on board. You know, we sh shouldn't speak ill of somebody who might be dead. I, let's find him. Well, we'll speak That's... ill of him in the spirit of him being alive, because we're optimists. Um, Richard, a half an hour might be a bit quick to scour an entire deck through. Oh, but to find somebody of uh, Taft's demeanor... Well, we have our stewards to seek out too, and they're dressed like all the others. If we walk, walk briskly, no matter how fast he's moving, we'll catch up to him. Because all righty, off we go. All right. and maybe the uh, deck. best aristocrat win. All right, so you guys are going to speed walk each deck A and B 
looking for Taft and or either the stewards, but you guys are just you guys are just looking, right? You're just watching. Correct. You're not you're not trying to. And if we get else. one of the stewards, we'll ask uh, about Taft's being carefully right. stowed That's away in his true. room last night. Right. If you find one of the stewards that you're looking for. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, each of you may make a luck roll. Ooh. Ah. That is a pass. That's 91. Nice. Uh, those of you who who passed uh, can make a idea roll. Ooh, oh, three. Extreme. 24. That is a that is a hard pass. Regular for me. So with an with a successful idea, um, it occurs to you that uh, as you've made this uh, quick uh, walk, speed walk pass of if of each of your respective decks, A and B decks, um, no sign of um, of Taft, and also no sign of either of the unusual uh, stewards. Uh, so, so I'm fast forwarding, and you guys have now reconvened in the lounge. And you are able to kind of compare your notes, and every steward that you passed looked basically the same. They all are young men, young white men. Um, uh, they are uh, clean shaven with uh, very short cropped uh, dark hair, and they all have similar uh, weight and body styles because they're all they all look really uniform you know they look uniform in their uniforms right i mean they do that on purpose so that you they're almost invisible right any one steward looks like the other but those two weird student uh, stewards definitely stood out and they're definitely nowhere That's, to be seen now i think we need to bring this to the uh, attention of the ship well, I I the captain the captain says something about the stewards didn't he well, he seemed to think they were rather odd. Yeah. Well, unless yeah. these stewards are specifically assigned to the eating periods and, and the dining halls, they, there is staff that's specified specifically for things like that. Who on board the ship it's, would yeah. be in charge of that sort of stuff? Um, there is... is that in court yeah, the inquiry office. Uh, they are uh, pretty much in charge of all the stewards and th and that kind of thing. Okay. Well, we could go with a complaint and describe them with the beard and the mustache and see if... Uh... We could just tell them the truth. We're concerned because he's missing. The facial hair is offensive. We've got three people missing. Or in German, something. we have three yeah, people missing. We don't... we don't have to... Uh make a big fuss about the offensiveness of their facial hair, just that it's notable. Even the captain noticed it. They can't be somebody who are, they can't be staff who were stuck down on lower decks because they were seating the captain's table last night. One of them was. Um, well, there's it's definitely all a bit some, much of a coincidence. There's some mischief going on here. What if, what if Taft, the bearded man, the mustache Ape man, the and Ulstermen are all together in that room. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't possibly all. <laughs> Maybe the, the woman and the two men, but not, not the tap in there. Well, that, that's what makes it fun. They're trying to figure out how to all fit in there together, and they've been working on that problem for 24 I hours now. we should now. just tell them that there's some sort of mischief going on here. We suspect one woman is an imposter, and we expect that uh, three people are missing. We're getting ahead of ourselves. We just go to the inquiry's office and say, we need to speak to the tall, oversized steward with the full beard, because he was the last person who saw our friend and we're curious about him. Indeed. 
All right, inquiry office, ho. Okay. And then afterward, Gusty, you can give them your murder theory, but only after. My murder theory keeps growing. Um, what if the three of them are in it together? And uh... All feasting on death somewhere? All right, I'll place $20, Richard, on the fact that it was not a murder. I don't know uh, how you guys are keeping these bets straight. <laughs> That's why I got this little book. It's important to keep these things in order. Uh, and okay, you, and, so and you this, guys head down? Yes. Head down to the inquiry office? Indeed. Okay. Uh, so you get down to the inquiry office, and so there's like a head steward there. Uh, that's his office, uh, Carl Bertram. And, uh, and he, he welcomes you, uh, professionally welcomes and greets you as you come to the office. And uh, he says, um, uh, yeah, good afternoon. Are you here to uh, select a, a time for the skeet shooting? No, I would like to no. get some skeet in before uh, dinner tomorrow because that wedding is going to foul up my day. But there is another matter. Yes, Kate? Well, I was just going to say, uh, I would just like to uh, ask you about your your steward with the beard. And And you can see his face darkens. He's like, oh, yes. Um, is there an issue? Is there something I can help you with? No, just uh, a friend of ours got sick at dinner last night, um, and that the 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 steward with the beard and the one with the the mustache uh, uh, carried uh -huh. uh, brought him to his rooms. We just wanted to make sh just want to talk with them to make sure our friend got to his room safe. Because yes. he's not there now. Yes. Well, um, I believe um, they share a a crew quarter uh, down on C deck. I, I assume they may be still in their room. They have not uh, uh, shown up for work. And um, ma'am, if I, if I'm not being too bold, I, I, I'm, I, I think I prefer it that way. I, if you need something, um, please, one of my other stewards are, are more than willing to uh, to meet your needs. Is oh, there anything your others, that you need? All your other stewards have been lovely. Uh, oh, well, rest thank assured. You. Thank you. Well, and for that matter, uh, your, your the beardy chap um, was perfectly um, useful to us yesterday evening. But uh, oh. yes, I, I would be curious uh, uh, to look at their quarters. Did they sign on together? Is that why they're both unusual looking? Uh, so, uh, how are you trying to, uh, garner, you know, this is, this is insider business. I mean, this is, you know, white star business. So how are you going to try and pry this information? Oh, I just, you know, I'm just so curious to learn about all the, uh, you know, lovely people on the ship. I, well, I please charm, 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 charm the heck out of him. I passed a roll. <laughs> Uh, Catherine, you are quite charming. Uh, and so Mr. Bertram says, well, I probably uh, shouldn't be saying, but uh, honestly, I, I just, I don't care for them. If I'm, if I'm being so bold, I, I don't care for them at all. Uh, but they are a very unusual hire. I, I don't understand the captain's um, uh, reasoning for it, but um Apparently, Miss uh, uh, Miss Osterham um, vouched for these two particular stewards, and so the captain hired them on the spot. Um, I didn't actually have uniforms that would properly fit them, and well, I considered a, a dark stain on my on the uh, steward services. So, if they have chosen not to show up for work, I feel that is so much the better. But uh, if you are looking for them, my assumption is that they are in their quarters, crew quarters, uh, you understand. It's uh, C deck, and he, he gives you uh, a room number that, uh, that they share. Yeah, uh, I will look in on them. Um... I, uh, I quickly wrap my arm around George's shoulder, and I turn him away, and I lean down, and I say, what if the captain is involved? That's a bit extreme. 
why would the captain hire anyone on the spot? I wouldn't yes. even think the captain would be involved in the hiring. I would think that they would be involved. In the hiring. Yeah, it does seem like White Star Line, they're there for a, a big company like that, they have their own vetting process, not just taking on any old. Uh, something is insanely crazy. Yeah, something does seem amiss. We keep questions. talking. To, oh, sorry, go ahead. We keep talking to people too much. If there is some nefarious deed going on here, we are going to become quickly targets. Anyways, I turn back out and I go, <laughs> "You're so funny." Uh, well, two questions, John. Uh, uh, Beardy the steward had no discernible accent when he sat us, right? Would you notice that his English was accented? You know what? I'm going to say yes, that it was accented. I, I probably should have noted that. And that his accent uh, was more Middle Eastern. Uh-huh. A giant, a hairy giant from the Middle East. Um, and question two, uh, I would presumably know based on my station whether Mr. Bertram would take offense if I were to tip him. Uh, correct. Yeah, you Say you a, would a you would sawbuck. Yeah, that would that would be uh, uh, appropriate. Okay, so I I, I I shake his hand and and slip him a sawbuck, uh, and say that uh, by no means should should you consider to stay in on your reputation when a hire was made outside of your control. Um, again, I think that the standard of stewardship here has been excellent. And this is not my first voyage. I always enjoy the White Star Line. Um, I will perhaps inquire further with you if uh, anything further seems amiss in cabin C. Um, and you said it was uh, Mrs. Osterman who suggested them, eh? Yes, Mrs. Osterman. Did the captain know her previously? Is that why he took her word, or I, I don't just because she's I don't actually kind know. Of cute. I I don't know. I, I she just is a is a is a uh, a woman of of uh, uh, stance and power, and the captain, for you know reasons of his own, I, I, which I was not privy to, um, hired these two men and placed them in my service. Very well. Um, uh, George, Gusty, uh, how's 10.30 for another pair of rounds of skeet tomorrow? Well, that sounds lovely. Splendid. I, I shall you, put you down now. You didn't Thank invite you. me, Richard. And you can see that uh, Bertram um, takes out the clipboard and, uh, and looks at tomorrow's schedule, and he, he scratches out someone already in the 10.30 slot and enters Rockefeller into that 10.30 slot. Very good. Yes, and we'll, we need one for Kate as well. I look forward to seeing you with a bruised shoulder, Kate. Oh, we'll be fine. I'm tough, trust me. Very well. And but he does remind you, down yes, the... ma'am, we, we do have 20 gauges for the ladies. Oh, well, a pretty gun for a pretty girl, eh? But of course. But you're not coming down to deck C. It's not like that either. That'll okay, be Mr. fun. All right. It'll be like a safari. George? Yes, you and I. You and I will, will brave deck C uh, together. And uh, uh, Gusty, I hope you're not above a little bit of eavesdropping. <laughs> Does it start to seem more and more like something very odd is going on here? Well, now that well, we're, if go... we're away from the the others, we're we're together. Though. Yeah, something is something is quite quite strange going on. I want to oh, see if we you... can't li overhear what's going on in uh, Miss Ulsterman's uh, quarters. Uh, if we can't hear the uh, the rumbling of uh, of Taft's stomach through the door, we should be able to hear that from here. Um, I think that I think that's a good idea. But I think now that the, what if the captain is somehow involved, I can't imagine him risking his entire career 
on some silly nefarious. Uh, oh, but I mean, the stewards aren't going to work damage his career. I mean, if maybe if Ulsterman bribed him to what let them we, on board. What do we know about Taft? He did. Let's make a silly guess about uh, some sort of murder plans. If somebody wanted well, to bump off Taft, why would they? Well, since he's mostly made out of butter, she brought, uh, she needed uh, sous chef. Well, she just wanted to have a nice meal, and she's a cannibal, of course, um, and imposter, and her, darling, brought I, her I, cannibal I, friends with her, and they just uh, found the juiciest meal on board and uh, got him nice and drunk. And Catherine Darling, I, li- I like the way you think, but uh, seriously, seriously. Um, I mean, he's a fat and obnoxious individual, um, but I can't think of any reason he's why he's want to be a snob. Why would someone be posing as Elizabeth, I'm sorry, Joanna Osterman. Osterman? Joanna Osterman. Why would she insist on having two people? See, she could have poisoned him at the table and she then needs had, accomplices for something. Had yeah, her accomplices take him away. Well, her motives are, are beyond me. Um, I don't know why she'd want to kill Taft. Um, well, George and I are going to go downstairs and, and knock up the ruffians and see what their accomplice is to. What if we just barged in? To her? Into her room? I mean, what could they do to us? Well, we heard her unlock it. She's not um, uncautious. The locks are not exactly super strong on this on board ship. That, 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 is, that is breaking and entering. It, it's, uh... no, well, like it, I say, what are they going to do to us? Throw us well, on there's the a brig. Yes, but Office Vanderbilt, you She's George a first Kirk. class. She's a first class uh, passenger. Unless she's an imposter, I don't know. Well, I guess suppose true. it's how Maybe much how much we're willing to risk for the sake of answers. Well, don't get thrown in the brig before the wedding. I think those two are cute. It'll be a, uh, a, in a silly little way, but transatlantic—that's sort of romantic. What time All is right. the wedding tomorrow? Uh, right uh, before uh, uh, the dinner service, the noon dinner service. Right okay. after Skeet. So we have until then. We might need those. I don't know. Is there any kind of security on board the ship? You are aware of a ship's detective. Ah. Why don't we go talk to him? Right. The office is right by the inquiry office, in fact. It's right over here. As I recall. Yeah, just around. Well, we'll see if Hercule Poirot is uh, on duty. You you really I haven't read Agatha Christie. Hmm. Unfamiliar. You, it's quite enjoyable. Your, it's not your own pen name, is it, Gusty? Oh, no, no, no. no. I couldn't write uh, like that. There's a certain She's, similarity in the first names, you see. Oh, never thought of Makes that. Makes a point. Um, well, I mean, do you want to consult him first? Do you want to go downstairs? What would you like to do? George, George were you going to go with no, I'm going to go down to see and yeah. check in on our friendly uh, oh, well, couple. We, we could file a missing persons, what have you, with the inspector. Um, yeah. We, we, uh, be careful. Oh, yeah. Well, the two of us are going, and I'm going to have my trusty walking stick with me. And we are on the Adriatic. It's not as though we're about to be you know, jumped by some backstreet, you know, so and so's. Well, I have no idea what's down there. You know, the same sort of people we step over on the sidewalks. So we're going to take Richard and George as they head down to sea deck. Uh, And so, yeah, there are stewards posted at all of the stairwells. um, And so they, they 
are familiar enough with uh, different people. They, they, they know who to allow up and down certain stairs, you know, between decks. Uh, so they see you guys come in and, and you have free reign to head down. And of course they, they try and, you know, ensure that only the right people are coming back up. Um, so you guys head down to C deck and uh, the corridors are, the passageways are a little more narrow uh, here on C deck than they are on uh, uh, A and B. Uh, but it takes some time, but eventually you do find uh, the, the crew quarter cabin uh, and these crew quarter cabins are all two man cabins. They're quite narrow. Um, they're very much, uh, they're very similar to in, in style and appointment as you might find on a, on a train, right? Train cabins. Um, so uh, yeah, you're in front of the door. An, a rapping on the door is uh, met with silence. Hmm. That was firm, George, but you can give it a firmer one. And still silence. Uh, I'll try the handle. It is locked. Mm -hmm. um, is there a steward visible on the corridor either way? Uh, give me a luck roll. A group luck girl. So who has the, uh, between the two of you, who has the lower luck? I have a 70, so. Oh, that'll be me then. Isn't it always? And, oh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> it, is. it really is. It's, uh, and it's also a fail. <laughs> 89. Uh, yeah, there seems to be quite a few people uh, bustling through here at this time. Uh, and of course, due to the nature of where you're at, uh, they are primarily employees. Uh, and so uh, some do look at you and eventually one approaches and says, um, hello, is there anything that I can help you with? I hope so, uh, fellow. Um, Mr. Bertram uh, advised us that this was the cabin in which the two odd stewards live. Yes, uh -huh. we yes. Have, we have some questions for them that Mr. Bertram has, uh, is also curious to learn the answer to. Uh, is it possible for you to open this dark chamber up? Uh, right or away, sir. The, yes. And he digs in his pockets and out comes this, uh, you know, wad of keys on a, on a ring. And uh, he pretty expertly starts kind of flicking through them and finally finds one and says, I believe this should do it for you, sir. And uh, click, 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 click. And he unlocks it. And uh, he says, is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, not just the moment, but stand by. I don't know if there's going to be any trouble. These two seem to uh, have a reputation. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, I'll, you know, shake his hand, and he only gets a, a five. But oh, you know. very good, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, the lights on. Uh, the lights are off. Okay. They okay. work. The lights turn on, and the room is empty. It's pretty easy to see into this tiny little two-man cabin. They sleep uh, Murphy style, Murphy you know bed style. Is um, it as if no one's ever been in it, or, or is there personal items about? Well, are you guys going in to, to check it out? I'll take a brief peek. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, there is room enough for two people to walk around in there, but probably just two. Uh, okay, so you guys go in and uh, start looking around. You do see uh, under the bottom uh, bed bunk, uh, there are a couple of uh, small attache suitcases. Um, I need each of you to give me a idea roll, though, as you uh, get into this uh, small cramped. Ooh. That's a hard pass. A little musty uh, room. Mm, 13 is actually an extreme by a point so we're uh, thinking so start. both of you both of you as you get into this room um it kind of takes your breath away a little bit you're like <laughs> "Ooh, there is a very strong uh musk odor in this room in fact um as you're both in here since you each had a hard or better success as you're in here dawns on you that this room 
it has an odor to it that uh, strikingly and strangely reminds you of the reptile house of a uh, zoo. Hmm. Mm. How odd. This is sharp, right? This is a sharp scent? Yeah. It's unpleasant. Mm. Uh, to the fellow who let me in, I'll call back and say, yeah, uh, these stewards are, are properly AWOL. Um, we'll be going up to speak to... Um, to uh, Bertram and the detective, but if you want to make an announcement beforehand, uh, you know, if what I know what your protocol uh, is, whatever you think is best, sir. I, I can go and report to Bertram. Uh, I think you should. They're 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 they didn't uh, they didn't show up for duty, and they're not in their chamber, in their cabin. So I, they're properly missing. Right away, sir. Right away, and he 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 takes off like a bullet. And that way, nobody's watching us, George. Which I think yeah. is better. So uh, these flimsy uh, cases, they're heavy cardboard, yep. I assume? Hmm. Uh, open or locked? Uh, I mean, they have little latches on them. Not sure. I'll just try. Yeah, and uh, they, they, they pop open. Interesting. Uh, and when you pull the attaches out from under the, you know, from under the bed to, like, put them on the bed to open them, they are quite light. I mean, they're, like, you you grab them and try and you know you know lift, assuming there'd be some heft to them, and they're like, whoa, hey, hey! And when you unlock them and open them up, they're completely empty. Hmm. Uh, and the bedclothes are disturbed as though they were slept in. Uh, there are no bedclothes. Okay, they're just mattresses. Yep. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's no. Well, there are sheet. There's sheets and blankets. Um. Uh, and they look a little ruffled, but um, um, when you said clothes, I thought you were saying pajamas. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So, right, they may have slept in them last night, or they may not have, but they didn't take yeah. their suitcases with their civilian clothes. What is this? What do you think, George? I mean, did they both grab Taft by one arm and then jump off together? Yeah. The, uh, watch well, maybe. maybe they, uh, I wonder if they've gone farther below into maybe one of the holes. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, this is a big ship, and if they are up to no good, if if they did mark Taft as a target, yeah, this this could be bad. Well, it's so strange, too, because Osterman made it so obvious that she was associated with them. Uh, so we're rifling around, you know, under the mattress, uh, you know, there's, I, they don't have an attached bath, right? They have to go to the head down the hall. Correct. So there's not a lot to look for. Yeah. Um, just, you know, a little pokey here and there. There's something stuffed in a crevice or scrawled yeah. behind. Give a, the... Do a spot hidden. Oh, 19. A small miracle. Because I only have basic. Yeah, so 19 is a Fail. regular. Uh, all right, yeah. So uh, with your success, um, yeah, you find there's uh, there's very little uh, to be found here. Um, but uh, uh, as you're kind of, uh, you know, looking at the bed covers and stuff, um, you do see, uh, you do find just two uh, strange, uh, kind of silvery, uh, thin sheets of something. Um, and so as you kind of rub them between your fingers and kind of look at them, you know, they, they almost have the appearance oddly of scales. It looks like you found two scales, oh. two reptile scales. That you have there. That's... Uh, you have to look for yourself, George. I'm gonna. Uh, I have a, a a jewel in my case. We could look more closely, but they look like yeah, they fit. fish scales or uh, very odd. Yeah, this is very odd. Did they bring a pet snake on with them? <laughs> yeah, explain the smell. From the size of those scales, though, that have to be a Boy. very large. Yeah, I mean they're at least they're at least thumbnail sized each individual one. Wow, 
That is quite large. All right, uh, I'll put these in my uh, waistcoat. Uh, I think uh, our friends are right. It's time for the ship detective. Yeah. We have some ruffians on the loose. This is this is pretty good entertainment. We're only a couple this, days out. <laughs> this is. Uh, Gusty might have a <laughs> have his fun story after all. Yes, he can write another one of his uh, fanciful tales under his pen name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to leave, I think we should leave the stateroom with the cabin door open behind us. Yeah. Uh, so the general awareness that these two are out and about becomes common. Um, and that way it also looks, I don't know, it makes clear that we weren't doing anything secretively. Yeah. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not used to running around uh, digging through the staff's things. Mm. Um, all right, then let's get back up into the fresh air. I don't, this is, thank. Uh, okay, you guys are ascending back to uh, uh, A and B deck, respectfully. All right, let's break there. And next week we will finish this. We'll pick up with uh, Catherine and I going to see the detective. Yes. Excellent. Okay. All right. Um, our players included Morgan Llewellyn, Stuart Lively, David Gasway, and myself with John Hook as the keeper of the secrets. We have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members. You can set up private games and learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. There's a link below. We currently are producing four shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a, realist, a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved with the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to help support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure in the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming. Maybe I'm wrong, loving